This conference will now be recorded. All right, so this is uh, August 7th, and we are diving into the second part of Ephesians 2.16. But before we do, we uh, did, we, did we have any homework last week? Uh, yes. What was our homework? Hebrews 2, 14 and 15. 14 and 15. Awesome. So let's uh, spend just a little bit of time dialoguing on these verses and seeing what uh, we can draw, draw out of them. Again, let's share the wealth of uh, communicating as far as uh, everybody's ideas. That's the way that I really believe we truly build the body of Christ. So can somebody uh, read Hebrews 2, 14 and 15 in KJV? Who would like to do that? I've got it. Go ahead, John. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had power, the power of death, that is, the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. So I can... Uh, take away from this that Jesus came to kill the devil and therefore set us free. Is that right? No. No? Why isn't that right? Because um, he came to um, set us free. Sure. So he came to set us free, and the way to do that is to kill the devil. No. He died on the cross for us. He died for our sins. So then, if the devil is not killed, how does that do anything for anybody? And let's share this around a little bit. How does his dying on the cross with the devil being alive, how does that do anything for anybody? Because through the resurrection, he showed us that there's a way to everlasting life, and therefore death has no power over us. You just hit the nail on the head there. So let's step back from the resurrection for a moment. Not that that's not an absolute beautiful thing to talk about, because it is. But what is it also that Anthony just said that is, is what Jesus did? What did he do? He died. He died. He, but wait yeah. a minute, that makes no logical sense. He's got to come and kill the devil. So help me out. Yeah. What, well, he destroyed. What, he destroyed his power over us. Amen, Christ, amen, John. Amen. Christ destroyed the devil's power over us. He destroyed the devil's power, one hundred percent. Christ, amen. you know, if I'm in a uh, angry, wrathful rage with somebody, the best way for me to, you know, humanly speaking, please understand, humanly speaking. The best way for me to take care of that situation is take that person out, right? No, of course it's not. But the point is, that's what Jesus could have done. He could have simply sure. came and eradicated the devil and we're done. He didn't do that. Instead, he died. He died. Why? Okay, why did he, we, he die? We, hey, Rosie covered that a little bit earlier. Why? What was it that his death did for humanity? He set us free from the covenant of sin and death. Set us free. Wait a minute. Covenant of sin and death? What is that? If we go over to Romans 2, 8. And then, I'm gonna, and then we're going to get over to our lesson. But go over to Romans 2, 8. Somebody that hasn't spoken out here, Boniface, can you read Romans 2, 8 for me? Um, no, wait a minute. Sorry. Romans 8, 2. Ah. <laughs> Sorry. Romans 8, 2. That's them two laws, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I remember yeah. it near the day, yeah, but... Absolutely. So, Boniface, can you read Romans 8 2? Boniface? All right. 
Okay, how about Marcel? Marcel? Uh, yeah, I can read it. Go ahead. Lance? What, what verse is it? 8 2. So it's there. Hmm. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. There's the covenant of sin and death that Kyle was just talking about. That is that is what he set us free from. Without that being set free from, what do we as humans have to fear? With, without, that, without that freedom, what do we have to fear? Nothing. Come on, guys. Kyle. So without that freedom? Yeah, with if we did not have that freedom that he died so that we he would destroy the power and thus take away the power from the devil, thus in that sense destroying the devil, what do what would what would be our result? The resurrection unto damnation. No, no. Oh well we would Die. It's here in verse 15. There are three words here in, in verse 15. Actually, it boils down to one word. What three in verse 15? What three words would those be? Subject to bondage. Well, that's what we're in. Absolutely, I can see that. Those weren't the three words I was tar targeting. What I'm targeting is. In Romans, yeah. We're still looking at Romans which 8. Is what puts us, which is what puts us into the subject to bondage. It, it, without what Christ did, we all we can look forward to is death. But said. because of what Christ did, we are delivered from the subject to bondage or the bondage. Right. Amen. Any other thoughts before we move this on over to Ephesians? I had a thought, I've forgotten. Go ahead. Well, it says here in Romans 8, 3, condemned sin in the flesh. So it's like the flesh is our bondage, and by making us like spiritual heavenly bodies, by by obviously following these laws for the, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ, then therefore all the sin is condemned into the flesh and left in the flesh. The flesh unrepentant is absolutely in bondage to the law of sin and death. But once we have that deliverance, everything changes. And that's what Christ loves to do is change everything. So, and all right. Any the, other thoughts here real quick? Was Did it say that the strength of sin was the law or something like that i remember yes. saying some of them. yes that's over in uh corinthians i can find it that's over in corinthians where the strength of the law is sin but what law sin See, and death. Here's, here's the whole here's the whole dichotomy a lot of people they look at that uh verses like that and they say well that's referring to the law of the spirit of, of uh, life in Christ Jesus, which is the commandments. It's not talking about that law. What it's talking about is the law of sin and death. So we have to look, when we start looking at all these different laws and whatnot, we have to look and say, all right, what law are they talking about? Instead of, uh, you know, I, for so long, I, I, I it's only been recently that I've really saw Romans 8, 2 for all it's worth, and realizing, wait a minute, we have to sit down and understand what law we're talking about. And it, it, so it, is, go ahead, is that Rob. what they mean by, by rightly dividing the word of truth? Oh, amen. Amen, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So let's move over to Ephesians 3.16. We are on the second part, Ephesians 3.16. We've gone through already the, the massaging, I don't know where I come up with that word, of uh, all of the details. And now we're going to come in and we're going to look at the uh, encouragement corner that I write. So Ephesians 3.16, who would like to read that for me? What do you want it 
KJV or KJV, uh, or do you, know, you want I it? I prefer KJV. No. Mm-hmm. Uh, Oh, who's, got KJV? Go, who's got KJV for me? I've got it. Go ahead, uh, Anthony. That Anthony, before you, before you do, uh, welcome to the call, caller six. And who are you? Pentica. Oh, hey, Pentica. Good to have you on our call. Uh, well, uh, good right. to be here. Awesome. And Anthony, go ahead. Ephesians 3.16 that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man in looking yes. at previous verses we see that the he referenced here is actually not jesus christ the son of god but rather our unconditional agape loving father instead though they are indeed one John 10 30. Uh, John, can you read John? Yep. John 10 30. That was nine. I and my father are one. That seems pretty clear to me. I mean, I just, it's, it, it kind of just nails it down. What are the one within? Pentica, could you read uh, 2 Timothy 2, 24 through 26? 2 Timothy 2, 24 through 26. Timothy. Two Timothy what? 2 Timothy, Second Timothy 2. two. 24 through 26. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, to apt to teach, patient, in meekness, instructing those, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of truth one more 24 to 25 you said right and six oh and 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 they and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will mm -hmm. so who is this servant of the lord that we're referring to here in this verse It's us. It's us. us. It's that's us. Cool. Yep. That's why when 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 I know I've got something right, what I'm really supposed to do is come and shove it in somebody's face so that they make sure that they uh, that that they repent and, and, and you know that's the way I'm supposed to do it, right? No. 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 Of course not. Of course not. We're supposed to love. Where do we learn how to love? From the Son. Where did he learn how to love? From the Father. If we have this agape love that they freely give us, then we can truly come forward with the power and the presence of the Godhead that's available. Amen. Which in fact is absolutely their combined desire, just as I was talking about. First Timothy two, three through four. Kyle, you got first Timothy two. Three through four for me. Kyle um, had a thought. What's that? Kyle had a thought. Had a thought. Oh, 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 whoops. Uh, John, go ahead. No, Kyle. Kyle had Kyle. a thought. Okay, okay, Kyle, go ahead. Yeah, uh, just out of the message translation, verse 25 and 26 stood out for me. I just wanted to share it. It says, sure, you never know how. It says, you never know how or when God might sober them up with a change of heart and a turning to the truth, enabling them to escape the devil's trap where they are caught and held captive, forced to run his errands. Mm. Oh, I like that. Yeah, forced to run his errands. 
Absolutely. You know, I don't know what everybody's conversion experience is within their walk with Christ, but can I, is it safe to say that we that most of us have probably been saved more likely by the gentle, loving approach rather than the dogmatic, mandated approach? Is that is that safe to say? Yeah. Is there is there anyone who has come to the Lord because somebody dogmatically demanded that they change now? Any one of us. I mean, maybe somebody. I know that's no, not, not the way me. it happens for me. Pentika? No. No. Yeah. Oh, for me. Awesome. Okay. So then let's move forward. Which, in fact, is absolutely their combined desire. Yeah, I've just, I've just got a thought, you know, just on what Kyle said. In yes, this, Anthony. It's that same verse 25 in KJV. It says, in meekness, instructing those, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. And that that, that really did, like, resonate with me. Okay, I'm, hearing, I'm hearing on a second, Anthony. I'm, I, I'm hearing more than one person talking at a time. All people. What's that? Sorry. I mean, I, I just, I'm, I'm hearing more than one person talk at the same time. It's really hard to hear the person talking. Anthony, go ahead. Sorry, I said in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. Now that really does resonate with me for a couple of different reasons. One, in my own coming to Christ cor more, well, correctly, um, I realized that I was just opposing myself. The only person I was preventing from coming to Christ was myself by the the ideas that I had. And um, that also, of those people who think they're actually having a fight with God, they're not really fighting with God, are they? They're just fighting with, with themselves again. Themselves. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's true. And I see how love would be involved because, like, It'd be, it'd be like if that was your child or if that was your parent or a family member, like you wouldn't have an excuse to give up on a person. So if we don't love everyone with that same kind of love, then like we have, what is that? What is that? Different weights for our scales or something like that, where our love is not consistent across the board for all of God's children, even if they don't know who they are yet. And even hmm. better that we can, we can offer to stand our position in the course of the life that God has set for them, and Amen. whether it's planting seeds or watering the seeds that was planted or helping them harvest, we get to witness the Word reveal Himself to His children, and Amen. we got to watch that that miracle. You said, so, so, so wait a minute. I'm, I'm going to jump in here. So wait a minute, Carl. Uh, what you're suggesting is, you know. I, I I figure it's a probably a good idea to love everyone who agrees with me and and thinks like I do and whatnot because that way we can all all build a like manner together. Are you saying that's not a good idea? God said, "Do you expect a reward for loving lovable people? Because mm -hmm. even the mm -hmm. heathens or the ones with many gods can do that. But yeah. it's those who." who love unlovable people that are marked by my love. And these are how you know that the sons of God, because the way that they love each other, they, they have this supernatural ability to love. love. Yeah. So when, when Christ came to this earth, what were we to him? Anybody have an idea children. where I'm going with that? Huh? We were children. Who didn't know who we were? No, well, not when of Israel. Well, you're getting closer. Um, right here, let me get uh, just a minute. Others? No. Nope. Disobedient. Um, you're you're close there. Romans five two. Romans five two. I'm sorry, I think I just quoted that. Romans 5.10. Romans 5.10. 
So, um, Boniface, are you on the line? Okay. So, Rosie, would you like to read Romans um, 5.10? And if you don't have KJV, that's fine. Oh, I got it. Hold on one okay. second. Okay. Okay. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. So what were we when Jesus came to this earth? What were we? Enemies. We are his enemies. Where is footstool? What's that? The earth was his footstool in Matthew in mm -hmm. the Beatitudes. He says that do not take an oath on the on heaven because that is God's throne and uh, do not take an oath on heaven because that is his footstool. And if you read the verse in when he's speaking to David, he said, I will make thine enemies thine footstool. So obviously that's showing you that the earth, the content, the people on it are obviously against God, but God, it's like, it's ridiculous to fight God. He just puts his foot on it and just rests on it and that's it. So if you, oh. if, if we, hang on a second, if we think about the being being the footstool or the enemies in that situation if christ would have taken on the idea of well he's going to love those that love him would he have ever shown up no nah, he came to say he came to save sinners just amen 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 <laughs> so he's telling me not funny. to be a foot one thing what kyle said it would it just really I really just want to just say it. It just it really did pop out of my head on on Timothy two twenty five. You said stood when you stood in your position. Now when you said that, like you guys just explained, it's like there's a war basically between the people of this earth and the enemies of God. Um, but it's not so much a physical war. Would you agree? It's more a spiritual war. And when you said stand in your position, I, I, I'm going to suggest that it is a physical war. It is a spiritual war. It is a mental war. It's the it's all of the above. And it says here, either way, it'll still fit. It says in meekness, and you said stood in your position. Now, meekness is the Greek word that means for taming a horse for war. To make a horse a workhorse for war. Mm. That's what meek is. That's what it really mm. means. But it means really mm -hmm. obedient because you couldn't take a wild horse. If you had a wild horse, how could you take it into a battlefield? It just run off. True. So we and were we wild can... horses, but now we're meek, ready to go, ready to fight for the Lord's case. But we're going to fight it his way. Interesting. Right. John? No, I just said that was interesting. Okay, yeah, gotcha. All right, so let's continue. Which, Sorry, in guys. fact, is absolutely their combined desire. First Timothy two, three through four. First Timothy two, three through four. Irene, can you read that? For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. You know, I hear people, uh, you know, say every once in a while, well, I wish I knew what the will of God is or was, because I would do that. Well, I think this passage tells us what the will of God is. What is the will of God? To know. To the knowledge of truth and to have all men saved. Have all men saved. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's the will of God. Our salvation and corresponding redemption is 100% their combined desire. 1 Corinthians 2 9. Let's see. Uh, Pentica, can you read 1 Corinthians 2 9? 
getting there. First Corinthians two nine. Two nine. So their combined desire. For this, for this end also did I write that I might know the proof of you where you be obedient okay. in all um, things. Go ahead and stop. First Corinthians two nine. Oh, yeah, that's it. second. Sorry. <laughs> no worries. No worries. I was reading second. I'm so sorry. We're good. Two nine. I got it. God is faithful, by whom He are called unto the fellowship of. Okay, I'm going to stop you. Again. First Corinthians two nine. I have it. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither had it entered into the heart of man what the things that God, what God has prepared for them that love Him. Amen. Amen. So Amen. We're some back. We're getting Sorry some about back the, the fumble bumble. Yeah. Yeah. No worries. No worries. Um, but we're getting some back feed on the on the line. So if you're not uh, presently sharing, please mute your phone. Uh, this is the, the this is the exact reason that the Son causes the Father's power and glory to flow through Him and to us. Um, Beth, could you read Isaiah forty one ten? Let's see, Beth? Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am no, thy God. That's a, that's a beautiful verse, but I was looking oh, for sorry. Isaiah. You know what? I think I said it. No, I might. I don't know. Isaiah 41.10. Okay, I'm at 41.10. That was right. Okay, try that again. Fear thou not, for mm -hmm. I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. Mm. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Amen. You know, the very next verse coming is Isaiah, and I was looking at the next verse, and I was saying, these aren't matching up. Well, it's because I wasn't looking at the right verse. Um, yeah, you know, if we, if we're, you know, with everything going on, uh, nations set, shutting down, uh, have, have being required to do things that are against our will, uh, those type of things, we have this hope. No matter what they do to us, we have this hope that he is with us. He will strengthen us. He will help us. He will uphold us. I don't know how, and sometimes I'll tell you what, I shake in my boots, shoes, uh, but I am learning, and sometimes it's two step forwards and one step back, but I'm learning more and more. He's got this figured out. Okay. If I try and figure it out, I never can do it. It always, it always ends up messed up, but he's got this figured out. All we have to do is hold on to his hand. Amen. To the there's another. There's a guy that said the next verse after uh, 4110 is, Behold, all they that were incensed against you shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing. And they shall they that strive with you shall perish. perish. Amen. Mm. Mm. That's, that's, you know, I, I would hope less and less people fit that but there's a lot of people doing that these days and sometimes yeah. they're the people within the church and I was, just, well? I was just i was just hearing uh the other day someone was discussing the difference between happiness and joy and the joy that we have from our salvation from the truth that has set us free and how it's different from the happiness that we might find in life or in moments Mm -hmm. That we can be in situations that don't make us happy, but they can't take our joy. Which Amen. Is the joy that, which is the joy that he endured the cross for us to have. Yeah. 
Like he suffered, he despised the shame, but he endured it and was obedient even unto death. Amen. Yep. To the praise and honor of his glory, wherein we can do and shall declare Isaiah 25, 9. Isaiah 25, 9. So let's see here. Um, John, you want to take that one? And it shall be said in that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him, and he will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. So I'm going to sidestep just a little bit here. How do we know when the, it's truly the Lord that has arrived? Because this is super important for everybody to really grasp is how we know, because there's going to be a lot of people coming along and saying, oh, there's God and, and here's God. How do we know where whether they are right or not? His feet will never touch the ground. And, and where do you get that from? In the Bible. Well, I get you there. I get you there. But what, what scriptures can we lean on for that assurance? Okay. Okay. So let's turn oh. over to... First, I've got another answer. Okay, go ahead. In the Good Shepherd, Jesus states that my the uh, I might be getting this wrong, but I've got it right in front of me. But my sheep know me. Uh, I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. They'll basically they'll recognize they'll recognize will recognize Jesus's voice, Jesus's words. That they can't be faked. The way he speaks, his character, his personality. Uh, above all and everything, he he is him, and we should know him through Scripture. Who we should know him as though he's, we should just know him wholly altogether. I don't, know his I don't disagree. I don't disagree with that, Anthony. However, yeah. there are there is this is the Scriptures as it relates to what Rosie was saying that we can do exactly what you're talking about within this framework. First Thessalonians. 4 16 through 17. This is huge, and every one of us need to keep this at the forefront of your our mind. Uh, first, 4 16 through 17. Marcel, can you read that for me? First Thessalonians. What is it? First, Thessalon first Thessalonians 4 16 through 17. Yeah, I get it. The Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead and the dead in Christ will rise first. After okay, I'm going to stop you right there. I'm going to stop you right there. So what's how? Where where is the Lord at this point in this whole verse before we get to 17? What's happening? He's coming down from heaven. He's coming the Lord down is heaven. coming down from heaven. Absolutely. With the sound of, a, of the archangel and the trumpet call of God. Yeah, absolutely. But as it relates to placement, what I'm really focusing on is the Lord is coming down from heaven. Then verse 17, Marcel. After that, we... We who are still alive uh, and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever and so uh, and ever. Amen. So what? Uh, where do we meet the Lord at? In the air. Where? We're just going to go there automatically. We don't have to go yep. anywhere. Yep. We, we are going to go up 
he's coming down, we're going, we're ascending. And so if you think, well, the Lord, uh, the Jesus is out in the desert or he's uh, over here or over there. No, the answer is no, he's not. Not until my feet take off off the ground will I believe it's Jesus. It can be an antichrist or it can be the antichrist, but it ain't going to be Jesus till my feet t uh, lift off the ground. And well, and we Jesus. also will also know because that at, at some point prior to that, God will will tell us the day and the hour, but not not until it's almost time. Okay, where do you get that? Yeah. Um, I don't know. <laughs> so, I, what, the scripture is. I, I know. May I say? May I say yeah, something? To that? Yes, please. The one. The one point. Every eye shall see him. Mm. That's right. Absolutely. That's Every what we're revelation. Shall see him. Every yes. person in this world will then get to know who he really is. Mm. Those who believe and those who did not believe. Yeah, absolutely. And that's that's over in Romans where we're talking about every knee shall bow and every tongue and confess. Every, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And then and there's a the, uh, verse in Revelation 16, or no, 6, which talks about uh, the great uh, hide, uh, hiding from them, uh, having the mountains uh, hide them because the great day of the Lord has come. Well, it's because yeah. they've been doing things in their own strength and in their own way. And we need not to be doing that. Kyle? Uh, what about the... Uh... Uh, I know one place it says that the uh, Christ's return will not be by observation, and then in another it says uh, the kingdom of heaven is within. Do those relate to this topic? Well, they do. They do. And, and, and when do when does heaven start? When does our new birth start? Is this something we wait for that's going to happen like 1 Corinthians 15 that says in a twinkling of an eye we will be changed? Or is this something that starts today and now as we take on the character of Christ and his transforming life begins a work in us? Which is Amen. It? Today and now. Today and now. Amen. We're being so, sanctified okay. right now. And What's the moment that, we accept him, we're being sanctified right now. All right. And Pentica, yeah, Pentica, the moment we accept him. So heaven starts now. Are we in heaven or are we on the new earth? No, we're not. We, uh, but, but because, uh, because we choose a different path, heaven starts now. The, the whole process of being becoming adopted sons and daughters of God begins now. So in that way, does that help answer your question there, Kyle? And I've, I've heard it said that salvation isn't a one-time event. You are saved, we're being saved, and we will be saved. Salvation is an ongoing process that begins when we accept the truth, that it's not that's just the, a one-time event. That's the definition of sanctification. You have to maintain uh, your holiness. Yes, yeah, yeah, it's, it's absolutely right. It's a work in progress. If I think because I accepted the Lord when I was in sixth grade, that was the end of it, that's not the end of it. It's only the beginning of it, and I got a long way to go. Amen. So oh, and let's, then, go ahead. It also, it also says that a child is no different from a slave and cannot inherit the kingdom or something, that only a mature son or a huyos, not a... That's over, in Galatians. That's over in Galatians, and it's talking about the sonship of Jesus Christ as it relates to the Father, and that he does not, ex he does not uh, accept the... Or he does not receive the inheritance before time, but... Uh, as the time, when the time is right, the son receives the inheritance, which inheritance then goes over to the sons and daughters of Christ, which is us, and we become we, we become grafted in as 
sons of God, daughters of God as a result. We're, we, the, the position we have ahead of us is amazing. It's amazing. Um, let's Amen. continue. Really kind of trying to focus on the time. Uh, let's go ahead and continue. By the love and compassion of his eternal spirit outpoured onto the entirety of humanity from eternity past, John 10, 18. Let's see, John 10, 18. Sister Beth, you have that for me? John 10, 18. I'm off. No problem. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. Absolutely. He lays it down willingly. Out of, out of begrudging, uh, you know, uh, I have to do this? No, not, not for a moment. He does it because he's passionately in love with you. Amen. If you ever wonder if you've got a, if you got anybody that really cares, as long as you're in Christ, you do, and it's Jesus Christ, the Creator of all of everything. And he Amen. only doesn't, he only doesn't says what the Father doesn't says. So that's what the Father's doing at the same time. Absolutely, up. absolutely, and therein they are one. And it's the same, so, it's out of the Good Shepherd, that's what it speaks about um, Jesus' voice. And obviously hmm. if there's one, then whatever Jesus says, that's what God would say. Whatever Jesus thinks, that's what God would think. Jesus' actions are reactions, it'd be God's actions are reactions. Towards any given situation. Situation. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Unto eternity future, Luke 133. Let's see. Uh, Anthony, you want to read Luke 133? I'll tell you to finish in a second. Luke 133. 133. We're looking at eternity future here. Luke 133. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Hallelujah. Whose kingdom are we talking about? God's kingdom. God kingdom. kingdom. I'm going to suggest. God. I'm going to say it suggests that it's the son of God's kingdom. The son of the and highest. Is, the son of the highest. Absolutely. Yeah, and then that's the kingdom says, coming. Go ahead. And then he gives the the kingdom that belongs to himself. The son gives it to the father. And like, well, the father the is actually kind of the opposite way around. The father, the father gives it gives to the it son, to the son, and then the son gives it to us. Oh, okay, there it is. There it is. He gives it to us. Oh, and then do we give it back? Do we give it back? To and, like, we, and we lay, we lay our crowns down at their feet. And in that sense, we're giving it back to them. When you said like lay Crowns, we lay our crowns down at his feet. It's that verse in Revelation where it's showing you the elders, um, and they lay down their crowns and they they worship at the there's like these creatures singing holy, holy, holy um, about God, and then the elders get on their knees and put the crowns down. It, then yes, it's almost Revelation like, four, Revelation four ten through eleven. You are correct. Then it's the, the, that, and where did you get your reference from about the crown that we would lay our crowns down? In the sense of, so if we look at the what the elders are doing, 
we're basically doing the same thing. Same thing. We're not gonna we're we're not gonna take on the spirit of the uh, of Lucifer, where it's all about me and uh, and my and I. Well, what I can see in Isaiah 14, 13 through 14, but we're going to honor them and glorify them, and and what that's the whole that's everything that's ahead of us. There's a verse, and I don't know which verse it's on top of it. You might know it better, guy. And we are to become as the the angels and the saints in heaven. Is it not possible? Because obviously we're talking about God. We're talking about heaven when we're talking about revelation and around the throne. God's completely outside of there's there's no there's no relevance to time in in God. We don't know whether he's in the, the past, the present, or the future. There are we not possibly those. We could come through coming forward, becoming such as those saints, such as the angels, such as those elders praising God. Well, we're going to be like them for sure in that sense. Yes, absolutely. Let's move on because I'm looking at the time and I, I'm looking at, we're running out of time and I want to really finish this part. Uh, and so the next word is eternally. So uh, let me see if I can build into that unto eternity future, eternally, 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 17. Now, we read a little bit of this earlier, but let's go ahead and read this whole thing again. 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 17. Let's see. Uh, one of us, are you online? Yes. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on with Boniface today. Okay, um, let's see, Rosie. Yeah, yeah. First, First Thessalonians 4, 13 through 17. Okay, so that was First Thessalonians 4, 17. Four. You... First Thessalonians 4, 13 through 17. Okay, gotcha. Hold on one sec. Hallelujah. Um, do you want the King James Version? Please. Okay. okay. Alrighty. The coming of the Lord. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are. Hey, can I pause you for a minute? I'm hearing sure. some background noise. Can we mute the phones and, and computers and such? And then, Rosie, go ahead. Okay. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen. What blessed strength we can secure from knowing these promises of, of assurance even unto this day. First Corinthians 2.14. Let's see. Um, John, you want to get First uh, Corinthians 2.14? Sure. This kind of, uh, before you read, this kind of deals with the flesh concept, Anthony, that you brought forward earlier uh, and, and really nails down uh, what that's talking about. First Corinthians 2.14. Go ahead, John. But the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Two Amen. different men, a spiritual man spiritually focused, spiritually minded, spiritually targeted versus a natural man that is anything but. 
the natural man can't get this. The spiritual man can. That's why the, I think it is uh, the Reader's Digest or maybe National Geographic came out, uh, I think it was Reader's Digest, I think, came out and uh, suggested that Christians are mentally ill because we can't think and reason for ourselves. Well, the, anything but the case is that. We can think and reason. We just want to think and reason with the mind of God. <laughs> so uh, that's that's what everybody on this call, I believe, desires to do. A million percent. That's it. Go ahead. You said a million percent. Mm -hmm. just want to put something out there for people that, are, that I've came across that it really does really put an end to conversations with people who speak to you like that, which you shouldn't be bothered about anyway. But 93% of the world believe something and only 7% of the world, which are like trying to shout it about, they're the ones who are convinced that they believe in nothing. And if you ask any of them to take a polygraph test, there was a test done by a company that um, they were hiring workers and they did over 15,000 polygraphs and every single person who answered a polygraph, do you believe in God and answered no, they were proven a liar in that question. Just a bit of praise there. Just <laughs> Interesting. By the way, we have a caller seven on the line now. Who's caller seven? Ask them to take a polygraph test. They'll give you a lot of jibber-jabber, but they won't take a polygraph test to prove it, which you'd think would be the easiest way to prove they were right, wouldn't you? Yeah. yeah. Amen. By the way, we have a caller seven on the line. Who's caller seven? Well, it's probably me. I couldn't join until now. Okay, well, I'm glad to have you on the line now, Twyla. All right. I got um, to go. <laughs> Okay, so we are just wrapping up Ephesians 3.16. Um, that said, I share these final concluding thoughts with you. Romans, Romans 8, 5 through 10. Romans 8, 5 through 10. Um, Twilight, can you read those for us? You know, I'm only able to listen right now. No problem. No problem. <laughs> Uh, Beth, can you read that? Sure, 5 through 10. Yeah, Romans 8, 5 through 10. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Two more. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. So let's go ahead and uh, conclude this with prayer. I'll go ahead and close okay. the prayer today. What's that? I just wanted to make mention of, uh, are we crowned with life? Does God crown us with life? Well, what is eternal life? Because, like, if we're laying down our lives, then, like, and he crowned us with life, and then we lay down our lives that he crowned us with, is that? I, 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 could, I can definitely go there. I have no problem okay. with just that wondering. thought process at all. I had a conversation with somebody on Cora that had a really beautiful, like, living word sort of expression for that. He had a mundane job. He's driving, which he's really happy about. He's driving through the fall, which is his favorite time of year, and he's looking at all the beautiful colors, and um, all the leaves are falling. And he's so happy looking at these things. And it's like he, he says basically to me, like he heard, like it was God talking to him, saying, do you realize that this that you think is so beautiful is actually death? 
<laughs> and in the same way Amen. that I rejoice, I rejoice over a man parting from his fleshly ways, like his earthly ways, and then being reborn into the spiritual ways, in the same way that a tree renews itself. Amen. In season. Amen. 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 I just thought beautiful. that would have been beautiful. He put it a lot more better than that, but it was beautiful when I heard it. Well, I thank you for sharing that. All right. Let's go ahead and close in prayer. Lord Jesus, I thank you for the time together today, uh, for coming together, brothers and sisters, to just fellowship at your footstool, um, Lord. Um, I want to bring up uh, in particular uh, three prayers. Uh, number one is world circumstances. Um, yeah. I, I don't know if these are all in uh, order or not, but you know, the Lord, uh, Lord, this world is is not doing well right now, and that's because we have pushed you away and turned away from you. Lord, help us to see that we need you more now than ever. And help us also remember, with great persecution, always comes great revival. And we can Hallelujah. we can rely on that. Yes, Lord, Lord, in specific, I would like to list, lift up Jeanette uh, and uh, her situation in Sri Lanka uh, and the whole Sri Lanka uh, uh, country, Lord, uh, because it sounds like hard times are coming there. Um, I, and, and Lord, I also want to lift up to you, Harry, and just continued recovery for uh, his situation from uh, passing out while doing weightlifting or something like that, Lord, uh, that you would just restore his body and his soul uh, this, uh, uh, today going forward. And may you use this to bring him even closer to you and uh, he, he, that he may come to know you uh, if yeah. he doesn't. Lord, yes. thank you for uh, just giving each one of us the ability to uh, worship to de together today. And I just pray that you would empower each one of us that we may go forward with your strength, your boldness, your energy, not to condemn and criticize and put down others to lift them up exhort them and encourage them to surrender their lives to you in yes, your holy Lord. and precious name i pray amen amen, amen. amen. all right love you thank all. you